Thank you very much, Chair Castor and Ranking Member Graves, and thank you to our witnesses. Uh, this is a good conversation we're having today. We know that the transportation sector is a large contributor of anthropogenic greenhouse gas, gas emissions, and we know that the hazardous air pollutants, particularly from diesel engines, disproportionately affect our vulnerable communities. In my home state of Oregon, uh, they've recognized the public health risks of diesel trucks. The legislature just recently passed a bill to phase out older diesel truck uh, or diesel engines with newer models by 2025 in the Portland metro area and earlier this year uh, Daimler Trucks North America announced that it's going to begin manufacturing electric Freightliner trucks in Portland. They'll be on the road by 2030, and these are important first steps to help mitigate the pollution from heavy-duty vehicles. Um, in Northwest Oregon, the district I'm honored to represent, our mass transit agency, TriMet, recently launched their first all-electric buses powered by 100% wind energy. TriMet estimates that the buses will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 100 to 140 tons per year compared to their uh, diesel fleet. Uh, the renewable powered buses ease the congestion and reduce air pollution as they smoothly cruise through the Northwest. It's very exciting. Uh, the transition, of course, benefits the environment, but also the health and well-being of the communities. And I really encourage um, colleagues here today, you know, we, we heard about the cost, especially with things like buses. We need to consider as well the cost savings in, in terms of health care, job loss from people who are suffering from health conditions. So let's keep that in mind as we're, we're um, crafting ideas and policies. Mr. Popple, um, you made um, several suggestions in your testimony about policy. Uh, what would be the best thing that Congress could do to incentivize the rapid de uh, develop deployment of zero emission trucks and buses? And where do we need uh, more research and development, investments in research and development as well to support our transition away from diesel to clean technologies? Well, thank you, Congresswoman. I appreciate the question. I, I think the most Could you push your microphone button, please? Oh, it's just needs to be closer. I think the most important thing that we can do is continue with the programs that already exist. So I would say the number one priority from my perspective would be to make sure that we have a long-term transportation bill. So a renewal of the FAST Act and continue the LONO program. The reason that's so important is because there are applications that are relatively easy to electrify, like city buses and school buses. And what we typically see in bus and truck is the technology starts in depot-based vehicles like buses, it's perfected, and then it's transferred to trucking. So we saw that with natural gas and with propane. I think we're gonna see the same thing in electric. So if we want momentum towards zero emission heavy duty vehicles, I think it's important to keep the momentum we've already got on the applications where it makes sense today. And do we need more research and development in any particular areas? Absolutely. I, I think one of the new front frontiers that we're eager to explore is this intersection between transportation and the grid. And the Department of Energy and the Department of Transportation should be seeking ways to create joint programs specifically around vehicle-to-grid technology. Great. These are big batteries, and they enable the grid to be more resilient. For example, after a storm or an earthquake or a fire, electric school buses or city buses could be putting power back onto a down grid. That technology still needs the research and development. Terrific, thank you. Mr. Logan, um, I co-chair the Bipartisan House Oceans Caucus, and I really appreciate your testimony uh, mentioning that by 2050, ocean-going vessels alone will account for about 17% of emissions worldwide without significant efforts to decarbonize. And the electrification of the maritime industry is happening gradually. We know it's happening in Europe. Norway's kind of leading the way, but in the United States, we're falling behind our international allies. I represent a district that's bordered by the Columbia River and the Pacific Ocean. I invite you all to visit. It's beautiful. Uh, but I'm very concerned, obviously, about the effects of emissions from diesel-powered engines on our waterways and ecosystems. So what are the current barriers to electri uh, electrifying the global shipping fleet, and how can we incentivize meaningful emissions reductions for the maritime industry? So I think the, the biggest um, obstacle is the fact that this is a sector that's regulated internationally. And so really having... Congress urge our representatives that sit in those bodies to really step up and push the international community to advance technologies in ocean-going vessels. Um, that, along with incentives, I think can move us in, 
light years uh, ahead of, of where we are today. And, and I mentioned Norway. Are there other places that are really out in front in, in this transition? I'd have to get back to you on that. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. Ms. Armstrong, good morning. Yes. 